Mr. Danielson will be filming us today. Uh, so thank you for being here, Bruce. We're very, very pleased to have Pastor Bob Chell with the St. Dismas of South Dakota uh, to lead us in an invocation tonight. Uh, Pastor, welcome. What we'd ask is that you stand for the invocation and then remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor Bob? Yesterday we commemorated uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose courage and leadership transformed our country by speaking out for those marginalized uh, by, the, uh, by the policies uh, of the day. I've seen a lot of changes in my 64 years. Summer following my junior year, I was a volunteer. It was then called the Redfield State Hospital and School, where I received $5 a week for volunteering. But those buildings are largely empty now, as people who are developmentally delayed uh, have been mainstreamed, and like my nephew, hold down a full-time job. And uh, as a part of my seminary education, I served as a chaplain at Hawaii State Mental Hospital. You might think it sounds pretty cushy to be young and single and spending three months living in Hawaii, but I can assure you it was much better than you imagine. <laughs> it was really great. But even then, the buildings were largely empty, and, and the move to community mental health centers, I mean, those buildings have all been raised or repurposed, just like the buildings in Yankton. We've made great progress in working with the developmentally delayed and those facing mental health issues. Uh, when I came to Augustana, which was then a college in 1970, I visited the state penitentiary, where I'm now the pastor of St. Dismas, the congregation behind the walls. In 1970, there were 319 people incarcerated in South Dakota. Last week, there were 3,119 people, 18 short of a hundredfold increase. When I was, came to Augustana, if there was a homeless problem, I wasn't aware of it. Yesterday, after I wrote this devotion, I saw in Kelloland that we have almost 1,000 students who are homeless in Sioux Falls. Well, we've made great progress, there's still a lot of work to do. I think all of us who've enjoyed the bounty of our nation, of our state, and of our city have a responsibility to those who've, who have been left out of the American dream. The young mom taking care of three kids. The young man living at the Bishop Dudley House who maybe found a job yesterday. The staff at the banquet or the glory house or kingdom boundaries or all the agencies that serve the poor and the powerless who try to do more, serve more people with diminishing resources. 3,000 years ago, a man tried to speak for those who were marginalized, and he was not well received. In frustration, he went out into the wilderness where a great earthquake shook the land. There was no wisdom in the earthquake. <laughs> and a great fire came, but there was no wisdom in the fire. And a great wind, it too, gave him no help. But then he heard the still, small voice of God. And I would challenge all of us, you who are elected to lead, and those of us who enjoy the bounty of this country, to, keep, to be mindful of those who don't enjoy the great success and privileges that we have enjoyed as citizens of this great country in this great city. I commend uh, you to, uh, to listen to the prophet Elijah and the wisdom that he brings. May your decisions and your deliberations be mindful of those who are most in need of our help. Thank you. Could you uh, put your cookies down, please? Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. 